Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Las Vegas. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. One full hour of wrestling news, entertainment, and lots of Sin City surprises from inside the squared circle. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Mark Hoke. Ah! Good morning, everybody. Wake up, fellas. Everybody everybody, all peppy here? No? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Are we sure? Fish is just sitting there like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I need <laughs> caffeine. Welcome to the Mark Hoke Show, the number one professional wrestling show on the radio here in Las Vegas. We're very happy to have you joining us today. Now, last week I flew solo, and now I've got tri-captains in the house. Very excited. Andrew Fish Fane, what's up, big man? How's it going, man? How, well, that that's what I asked you. It's fantastic. Yeah. Beautiful Sunday morning here in Vegas. It is a beautiful Sunday morning here. I don't think there's too much smoke outside. Maybe these fires are starting to die down a little bit in California, so we don't have to nail that. Lucky for them, I would imagine, more so than us. Yeah, absolutely. On the phone, the king of future stars of wrestling here in Las Vegas, Joe DeFalco. Joe, what's up? Hey, I'm feeling a lot better than last week, I'll tell you that. Thank God. Joe the, Joe got the jab, and the jab bit back. How, how was yeah, that? Yeah, it was one day, one day. It was good, though. You know, after the fact, uh, it only lasted, but it was the day we had a show, so that wasn't good. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Joe's going to be joining us, and in-house, I am very excited to have this gentleman in here, because one of the best handicappers in Las Vegas just happens to be a little bit of a wrestling guy. Just a little. A little right. bit. A little bit. A little bit. Brad Powers in the house. Brad, how are you doing today? Thanks for having me. I'm doing well. Yeah, I'm very excited to have you on the show here. And we're going to be getting into betting on wrestling later on during the show. Brad's got the, you know, and I still don't look at those odds yet. I'll have to look at those on the commercial break. But No, no, no. You, no? Know, try, you try to guess them. Therefore, oh, I have you can to get, find some oh, value. We're going we're to play in a game with me. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Well, Brad, uh, Brad on the show, and Brad, uh, Brad, tell us real quick a little bit about uh, what you're doing here in Las Vegas, aside from the wrestling. Uh, well, obviously, betting. Uh, college football is my specialty, and uh, that's basically what I do and why I'm here. Uh, just betting on football. And he's very good. You do all right, Brad. I've I've heard the numbers. They're, they're still here fun. after six years. I mean, most people go belly up, but I'm still here. Yeah. I don't know about doing well, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you still have clothes will... on your back, so you're all right. <laughs> I still have you my know, appendages. On a, on a side note, I won my first uh, football bet of the year yesterday. Yeah. What'd you have the money on, Joe? Uh, I had an 18, 13 point teaser. I only bet I only bet thirteen point teasers. Quit now while you're ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Degenerates everywhere. Well, let's get into some of the news of the week first. And, and uh, of course, today we're going to break down SummerSlam that's coming up at Allegiant Stadium here in Las Vegas. I got the tickets. I'm ready to roll, baby. Six days. Going to be a lot of fun as we uh, break into Allegiant Stadium for the wrestling fans. That is going to be an exciting day. Uh, plenty of things happening, but I, I think I want to start a little bit with what's uh, going on in AEW. Uh, Rampage. Had the debut show last night, or a Friday night, excuse me. And our boy Christian, how about that? Wins the Impact that? title off Kenny Omega. Yeah, Kenny Omega giving the rub to the young star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, my my only problem with that is that now they're going to have a or not a re, well, I guess it's a rematch, but it's a rematch for the AEW title. And seeing that Christian already took the Impact title, isn't it kind of obvious at this point that there's no way Omega is going to give up the AEW title to him? Yeah, I just can't believe Christian is the champion. A, a, an amazing story. Of course, that kind of fell in when Hangman Adam Page was going to be taking that match and, and wrestling Kenny at uh, All Out coming up here in a few weeks. But, of course, he's having a baby. and Well, he's not having a baby. <laughs> well, the, the family's having a baby. If he's having a baby, that's a bigger news story than Christian winning the uh, Impact title. That Well, yes, it would. I will grant you that, Fish. Uh, but uh, so Paige is going to be sitting it out for a little bit here. So they they decided to go with Christian on this, and and the match was fantastic. Uh, I 
Don't know if any of you guys got to see it. I watched. But. I watched the end of the match. I just saw the end of the match and saw how he won with the kill switch on the chair, which was uh, one of my favorite moves anyway. So that was a great finish too. And I, uh, Joe, what what did, what, did you, what did you think about Christian and that match? Well, I, I, I've always been one of the biggest Christian fans, but that was in the past. It's like why not give it to uh, Vegas as Chris Bay. You know, it's like, why not make a young star? I, I, I'm just mind-boggled sometimes by decisions in wrestling. If I just ran every wrestling promotion, it would be so much better. Yeah, I, I got to say, Joe, <laughs> it, it, it seems to me that AEW is falling down that WWE path of let's, let's retread old guys. I mean, and not that Christian isn't a worthy champion because he's fantastic, but you're right. Why not give the belt to a new guy and let's push somebody else? Or give somebody, you know, give it to somebody in your own company. Like, wasn't that the idea that if Omega wins the title, that somebody from Impact gets the rub and somebody from their own company wins the title? It's like, wow, somebody from Impact's going to be Christian, who's almost 50 years old. Yeah. Like, wow, that, that, <laughs> that's really going to make, you know, and, I get, I, and I'll, I'll bet you Chris Bay would love the opportunity to wrestle a guy, a legend like Christian. But it, it's still, it's like it's Kenny Omega is considered the best in the world. Uh, how much better would it be for a Trey Miguel or a Chris Bay or whoever? Even a you know, Sammy Callahan. Who I'm not the biggest fan of, but one of these young guys that, that they really seem to want to push hard. And they didn't give him anything. Well, and, and there's a possibility they could be setting somebody up an impact on that, too. So, you know, yeah, well, maybe. You, know, you, could, you know, I know Brian Myers is going to be wrestling, but, you know, there's there's plenty of people in impact that, you know, what could get a rub Who? off Christian, too. So, yeah, that well, that's kind of yeah, what maybe, I said. Maybe but, you, mean maybe, the, you mean the WWE retread? Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe, yeah, that's maybe, what, well, maybe I'm just Kenny, saying that's what they booked it. Maybe Kenny Omega didn't want to do the job for someone in, in, in any of the young kids in impact and Christian's okay doing it. Yeah, I mean, who knows? There's, there's a lot. I think that's it. Oh yeah, it's a lot of politics. Believe me, I deal with it on, uh, I deal with it on our level. So imagine, uh, you know, the big money cat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, of course, Rampage debuting with that match, uh, we saw Miro, and and I got to tell you guys, this is the Miro I wanted. Mean, nasty, destroying people. Like when he first came into WWE, right? He looked fan. He looked unbelievable. They're doing a great job with Miro, and then. Dr. Britt Baker, you ready to go? Can you do the DMD thing? DMD uh, wins her match in. Uh, <laughs> no? no? No. No. Nobody wants to do the DMD. I, I like Britt Baker. I think she's fantastic, but she gets her win on Rampage as well. Uh, they did about, for the show, around 700,000 on the ratings. So a pretty solid debut on a Friday night for Rampage. It was also the highest rating for, of the year, I believe, for SmackDown on Friday night. So it didn't take any, any of the SmackDown viewership. Now and you know and Joe, just your thoughts real quick about you know Rampage, you know the show and you know being positioned at 10 p.m. like that. You you think they're on the right track? You know, I guess times have changed. You know, back in the day with Nitro, and then they added Thunder. There was just again we we've talked about with AEW that they they, they follow the suit almost of Nitro to where they have so many guys and. You know, having another YouTube show is, is kind of pointless. So if they can get on TNT, it's just more exposure for, for everybody involved, you know. And having a second show, you know, gets the Joey Janellas of the world who they signed early, who'd been stuck pretty much just working AEW dark the whole time. You know, it, it's getting some of those guys an opportunity to actually be seen by the masses. Well, Rampage next week is going to be the biggest show, yeah. period. I mean, it was so big that even a Adam Rank on NFL Network yesterday was talking about uh, that the Justin Fields debut was the largest, the most anticipated Chicago debut until next week when an AEW <laughs> and CM Punk debuts in Chicago. Oh, my God, that is something. Yeah, and, you know, of course, we're getting ready for that. Uh, the first dance, uh, Tony Khan kind of dropping the big hint there that, you know, yeah, he's going to be there. Yeah, maybe CM Punk and uh, Daniel Bryan will win the tag titles on AEW <laughs> next week. I mean, CM Punk apparently is doing uh, commentary for some MMA stuff, and, right. he, and he said that this fighter looked all elite. Did he say that? Yes, he did. Oh, wow. That, no one's being subtle about this. No, but... so CM Punk's dropping hints himself, so he it's, it's like 100% that he's going to be there next Friday. You know, and Brad, well, the funny thing is about all this is that 
Daniel Bryan is almost a forgotten man in all this nonsense. Yep. Can you believe that? Well, when he shows up, he won't be. No. <laughs> no. no. Pretty crazy there. Well, so, so of course, we're getting ready for that next week. Uh, we also had some really interesting going on with, with NXT. Of course, you guys, unfortunately, we didn't get to talk about all the cuts last week. But the story's now coming out that apparently WWE and Vince are mad at Triple H for Suppose this is the rumor that they weren't able to knock off AEW in the ratings when they were going head to head. So Vince is like, we're throwing out the concept and we're just going the young guys. We're going developmental. And now USA Network's upset. This this whole thing, you know, get triple well, first Triple H getting thrown under the bus. What do you guys think about that? Not surprising. Uh, I mean, somebody's got to you know take the fall. And <laughs> has Vince ever been that guy uh, to you know? be self-deprecating and take blame i don't see that so i mean it's not deserved considering how you know successful at least at the start in nxt was but certainly i mean it's grown stale it's tough to i mean it's exciting and stuff but uh it certainly doesn't have the same momentum that it did four or five years ago uh, apparently all the decisions for the cuts were made by johnny laurinaitis uh nick khan and vince mcmahon and triple h and Shawn michaels had absolutely no no they didn't even know they were coming let no. alone have any have any i say in who was going to get cut no that, that i think triple h took an fu on that one yeah i mean <laughs> the period joe joe what are your thoughts about that situation going uh, on? Or what have well, you, you heard well, anything well my thoughts are a aew and NXT's feud is the number one company, the number one show for AEW against what is universally termed a minor league NXT. NXT is the third brand. The, the guys in NXT's goal is to get to the main brand, to get to the main roster. And they hung tight. And NXT was universally praised and Triple H was universally praised. And over the years, we've seen Vince McMahon is getting universally bashed for being outdated and, you know, bringing in the new blood and seeing guys like Keith Lee, who in the past Vince McMahon would look at and not worry about his athletic ability. He'd look at him and say, well, he's kind of a, you know, a chubby guy. And even though Keith Lee got in really good shape, he was still – you know, a, a a bigger dude, but not the bigger dude like a Batista. What surprises me is that Kevin Cross checks all the boxes of what you would think a Vince McMahon would, would love. You know, a guy who's big, who's mean, who looks like the real deal, who's got a character. And in, in Vince McMahon's world, you know, building a character – is way more important than having wrestling skill. Daniel Bryan didn't get over because he had a wrestling skill. He got over because they were able to get people to chant yes, and he became this, you know, crowd favorite, the the underdog. And I, it really did surprise me on, you know, some of these guys that were put in really good positions. You know, a guy like uh, Tyler Rust who was Ryan Taylor and worked for us for years. And, yeah, he was in his mid to late 30s, but he hadn't even been with the company a year. Yeah, it was like, like six months, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, he got signed, and we were like, oh, crap, Ryan Taylor, awesome. And then all of a sudden, like the next week he was on TV, and then he was getting a push. Like back in the day, you'd get signed, and you'd have to go through the whole developmental thing, and you'd have to go through – you know, retraining because WWE had their way of doing things while those independent wrestlers that they signed were used to going in there and having the cool matches. And those were the guys they signed. So when you go out and sign these guys that are more about having cool matches and then throwing a meet immediately on TV, you know, it was different than in the past where, you know, you got signed and nobody heard from you again for, you know, six months to a year right. because you were reprogrammed. And now it's like even with uh, Zoe Stark, you know, she got brought in and loves Zoe Stark. You know, we helped her get to where she was. And I was shocked when they 
immediately put the tag belts on her within a month or two. That, the was, one thing, that was a surprise. I was I was know, really surprised they did that. I mean, I, I was almost more shocked that they were finally giving a push to Bronson Reed, who looked like the kind of guy I thought Vince would love because he's such a big dude who's very athletic. And then he was one of the guys that got cut, and that made no sense to me, his cut. Yeah, there's 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 to me there's two issues here. Is number one, I you know, and, and Joe, you brought it up, is you're taking NXT, which is supposed to be somewhat of a developmental show, you throw it against another company's number one show. That's that's not really a fair fight. You know, number one, it, it, and it's not it's not comparable to me. You know, oh, if, you if you were taking if you were taking Moxley, Dynamite against Raw, Jericho. that's another story. You know, All right? But, you know, and then and then the inconsistency of saying, okay, we're we're keeping guys under thirty. We're they've got to be this size, and then you get rid of people that fit that criteria, like Bronson Reed, for example. You know, it just there's just some things there that aren't making sense. To me. And I, I'll be, I'll be honest, I'm almost more shocked with the way they're booking Carry and Cross because even in his two oh. wins, he has not looked strong, and he should look much stronger than that. Well, well, let me tell you something about the NXT, and you know, as universally praised as it was, talking to people on the on the end, that they lost so much money from what they were paying people to what they were bringing in that it was insane but they were trying to build something and you know usually it's going to take time to to generate a profit but you know from what i understood there was you know going on tours and wrestling in front of five six hundred people at mandalay bay you know isn't cutting it yeah absolutely well and speaking of money i wanted to get into adam cole and this whole situation is so intriguing right now um of course just to catch everybody up on what's going on with Adam Cole, somehow a little clerical error happened, and you know, just WWE didn't realize. Oh yeah, his contract's up. Whoops! And Adam agreed to stay and work through SummerSlam weekend, so he has his what could be his last match on Takeover on Sunday uh, coming up. Uh, they flew him in, rolled out the red carpet. Vince had apparently had a meeting with him. Supposedly they offered him a million bucks to stay. And Adam Cole has not made a decision yet. First, Brad, if you hear that, what are you thinking about where this is going with Adam Cole? <laughs> there must be other offers on the table. It's got to be something <laughs> somewhere. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know, I I mean, this is to me, you know, and Joe, maybe to me, this this decision may be less about money and more about what Adam Cole wants to see happen to him. Yeah, you because know, if Vince threw that kind of money at him, and he he didn't just go, okay, you know, you just you just ten times my salary, yeah, yeah, I I, I think there's something going on there. What what do you think about this Adam Cole situation? Are you asking me? Yeah, I am asking you, big man. Oh, well, Adam Cole, you know, there there, there are certain guys hey, in wrestling that we've dealt Sorry. with, and <laughs> money wasn't the issue. You know, Austin Aries, the money wasn't the issue. You know, Austin Aries, you know, saved his money well, didn't have anything for me in WWE. Just let me go, and I'll, I'll go do my own thing. I'm not going to sit at home collecting money. Adam Cole could do whatever he wants. CM Punk could do whatever he wants. And a lot of times, Daniel Bryan, he could do whatever he wants. Now, a guy like Daniel Bryan and CM Punk, they made their money for, you know, a good period of time. I'm pretty sure Adam Cole wasn't working for $100,000. I'm pretty sure he was working for a lot more than that. And if AEW really wants him, and being as tight as he is with the Bucks and all those guys, I'm pretty sure he can get a really strong contract to go to AEW and be, you know, in their top 10 and their, you know, again, as great as he is, they got so many other guys that it, it, it's hard sometimes to to fit everybody in. You know, when you want to talk about a guy like Paige, who they look like they were going to push as the, the, the young superstar, it's taken them a long time, you know. So Adam Cole, he's going to do what he feels is, is best in terms of, well, hey, they just let my buddy Bobby Fish go. You know, I'm not sure what's going on with the other crew. You know, is Adam Cole happy just being in NXT? You know, does he want to be a, a player on the main roster? But will he be a main player on the on the main roster because of his size? Yeah, and that's you know, yeah, and and 
you know, I, I think to me, a lot of it, because I, you know, I read a few sources that said, well, they're putting all these pitches together for him, what they're going to do. It, you know, the question is, can Adam Cole trust Vince but, McMahon to give him the push if he moves up? If it's Vince McMahon, it, it's got to be at this point, money be damned, because at some point the optics have to, are, are looking horrible. If they lose Adam Cole to AEW, regardless of what the ratings or anything else say, you're losing your your top guys to AEW. You've lost, I mean, Daniel Bryan was a, a mistake on, on WWE's part, and I think they realize that now, but it's too late. CM Punk, I really don't think they cared if he signed with AEW or not, but they can't afford to lose Adam Cole, again, not because of the money, because the optics look horrible of having another guy go over to AEW. Yeah, the, perspe- the perception is really bre- bad. Uh, right. I, I think it's more. I think even though CM Punk hasn't been there for years, him and Daniel Bryan showing up to the to the main WWE fans. I don't know if Adam Cole is is that much on their their radar. Like NXT has a different fan base than the WWE, and I think those other guys, you know, leaving. Is is a bigger deal than Adam Cole, and you know, in the inner circles, I don't know how the, you know, the 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 hierarchy of, you know, who writes for Raw and SmackDown and who's involved with that in comparison to NXT. You know, a lot of those guys in NXT they've been protected because you know Triple H's guys, they're his kids. You know, but when Keith Lee and and Riddle and now Cross come in. You know, they have just become another guy, you know, mm. and it's like, okay, we got something for Riddle with Orton, so he's got something. But when they did it, he was just another guy, and he won some, and he lost some, and, you know, he was part of that whole 50-50 booking that WWE likes to do and not create real stars and then wonder why they can't create real stars. Yeah, it, the, the, the booking, I mean, the writing issues, there just seems to be... It, it, it feel WWE right now feels to me like that nice sweater that you've got at home, you know, that you've been wearing a long time, and that one thread just you know comes off, and you start pulling away at the sweater a little bit, and all of a sudden it's starting to you know fall fray at the edges. I mean, it, it, are are you guys getting that feeling too? And Brad, what do you, what do you think? To me, uh, when you talk of the rumors that I have heard, at least read a little bit, it, it seems to me like WWE has positioned themselves when a company is maybe positioned themselves to maybe be sell. Mm-hmm. I mean, with Mc, Vince McMahon, I mean, what do you do? You position yourself to, to, to be the most profitable and maybe you cut, trim some of the fat. I know a lot of the fans don't like that as far as AEW and whatnot. But that's what, from an outsider who hasn't followed it religiously the last four or five years, that's what it looks like to me. Yeah, and I don't have a problem with trimming fat. I mean, you know, you, you want to... No, but at the same time, the ridiculous... Vince McMahon, and it's obvious to everybody except for Vince McMahon, has lost touch with what is going on in the world. Because Vince McMahon still wants to build another Hulk Hogan, and that's not who you have to look for anymore. You don't look for those guys. You look for guys who can actually wrestle and tell a story, who are guys like CM Punk, or guys like Adam Cole, and those don't fit the mold of, of what Vince McMahon thinks should be a champion, and that's the problem, because Vince McMahon is still going to be in charge he has to step down and let other people take over, and that company can be run, regardless of, of their roster size, can be run smoothly and dominate a company like AEW. Yeah, it's a very interesting situation. We've got a minute to go. Joe, what, what do you think about that? You know, it, it, trimming the fat, There, there's so much fat there that it's, you know, it, it, it's amazing. Like I said, the talent pool is so large that everybody's trying to get everybody who's worth something and in the meantime, now all these guys are not getting, you know, opportunities. When you look at WWE and it's like, how did Heath Slater have a job for so long? How did they, you know, how did that guy continue to get paid? And again, nothing against anybody's skill level, but when you don't use somebody and you're just paying them to sit at home and you're paying them easy six figures, you know, I can't believe it took that long. Yeah. Now, you know, getting rid of Bobby Fish, he's 44 years old, maybe his contract's coming up, as valuable as he is, there needs to be some of these younger guys getting okay. important Joe, Joe, i got to cut you off because we are going to break. Hey, we're going to be back with more on the Mark Oak Show and Brad Powers betting it up. 1015 FM, 720 AM, KDON, the talk of Las Vegas. 
This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. All right, and we are back on the Mark Hoke Show, the number one professional wrestling show in Las Vegas here on KDWN. 101.5 FM. 720 AM on your radio dial. And, of course, uh, for those of you listening on KDWN.com, around the world, the globe, this uh, great little planet we're on. Thanks for all of you for tuning in here. We certainly do appreciate it. All right, it's time to talk SummerSlam, and it's time to get to you degenerates and help you make some money from SummerSlam. Yes, you can bet on wrestling. As sick as that sounds, Brad. I can, as Brad, Brad's wheels. Are, see now, Brad is focused. I can see the lasers coming out of his eyes. I'm like, can you uh, parlay wrestling matches? Well, l- let let's ask Brad about it. First, let, let's ask about these questions. How does betting work on wrestling? Uh it's you. It's not like you can bet ten thousand dollars. I'll just put it that way. Uh, it's changed <laughs> over. The, it's always been lower limits, meaning you, you can't bet too much. I would 50 say cents. <laughs> a little bit more than that, but not much. I would say it started arising about 10 years ago, right, right around Rock Cena 1, WrestleMania 28. I started seeing them show up at, at a lot of offshore sites. And, and then you could probably get a couple hundred dollars down, no problem, uh, on wrestling. What happened was at that time, the storylines were so predictable, or there was somebody that had a little inside information. Mm-hmm. I mean, even a guy like myself that wasn't even religiously following at that time. I could, you know, in a, in a pay-per-view predict easily 9 out of 10. And to your question about can you parlay them, well, one guy did about five years ago because it was so predictable. Somebody had the foresight at a certain site to parlay all, all 10 matches, went 10-0, and 0, and even though you can only bet maybe $100 or so a match, well, you, you do the math. I mean, he walked out with... More than ten thousand dollars by parlaying them, and then the day after, you, no, you can, more no, no more parlays. <laughs> I mean, matches. the problem is, and I, we were talking about this during the break, that that the WWE backs themselves into a corner. Goldberg is only contracted to match to wrestle two matches a year. He's already mat- wrestled one, so SummerSlam will be his second. So if he's not going to wrestle again this year, he can't win the title from Bobby Lashley. It's impossible. So therefore, Goldberg won't win the match. And there's guys that are sitting around on these sites, piecing all that together and putting together these odds. Although, so, I will say this. I guess he could win by DQ. Lashley doesn't lose the belt. That is true. And it's Another great for point. You make sure if you're ever betting on wrestling that the, the language is specific. Because if a book will take advantage, it will be of those DQ type, uh, type of results. And a lot of them, you got to read the fine print. Uh, at the end of this show type of thing, or at the end of the... There's a difference between the end of the match or the end of a show type of thing. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Wow. I've gotten caught on a few of those. Yeah, because if, like, Big E cashes in and you're betting someone's going to re- retain their title and Big E cashes in at the end of the show and then yep. they no longer retain their title. Sounds tricky. Joe, have you ever bet on wrestling? I've looked on numerous occasions. The problem is with a guy like Lashley against Goldberg, you got to bet like 900 bucks to win 100. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> but I'll tell you some a couple of interesting stories. Back when uh, TNA was running, uh, a, a local degenerate gambler wrestler that I know who worked in the office would have about five or six different accounts because he knew – the results of the pay-per-views, and he'd go on Bovada, and he'd make good money. <laughs> oh, and, but as you know, everybody said, the, the limits were low. Uh, the one big one was uh, at the, uh, I don't know if it was WrestleMania, whatever it was, when Otis won the money in the bank. That was a late switch. The thing was, it was filmed in Stanford like a week before. That's right, and yeah. One of my guys who works for WWE, we were talking, and he happened to be conversating with one of the wrestlers that was in the match, and it came out that, you know, Otis was winning, or Otis won the match already, and the match was already happened. It just hadn't aired yet, and you could have got Otis and that money in the bank for like 12 to 1. Wow. Wow, man. Yeah, that's got to be the tricky part about this. Yeah, so those cinematic you know, I, matches, like I would imagine the graveyard match from uh, yeah. Wrestle, the two WrestleManias ago with AJ Styles and, and The Undertaker had to have been filmed obviously well before. 
Yeah, this is this is a, a very interesting road to tread for these sports books that are actually doing this. So, Brad, let's we're gonna we're gonna go through SummerSlam a little bit, but let's uh, take a look at the matches and uh, we'll discuss you know what we're thinking and see how this goes. I can't wait to see what the best value is. I, I this is well, yeah. Be fun. I mean, you're gonna tell me that you guys are gonna tell me the best value. You follow story. We're, we're gonna try. We're gonna try. Um, so we got the U.S. Championship match: Sheamus against Damian no Priest. No odds for that. No odds on that oh, see, one. And I actually think Damian Priest wins that match. I think that's the one title change that may happen. I think that's going to happen, too. Joe, what do you think about that match? Yeah, you know, Sheamus has had every title. You know, he does, he doesn't need it. You know, Damian Priest, you know, he's a big guy who's gotten, you know, put in a good position. And, you know, it doesn't really matter because he can win the title at SummerSlam and then lose it in a rematch, uh, you know, in the next show. Yeah. So, you know, the, the one thing I've I've seen that Vince McMahon kind of changes the idea on, on some of these finishes that up until the last minute, you know, nobody really knows. So it's it's worth it to take a good underdog that, you know, kind of might be lively, like, you know, Brock Lesnar against The Undertaker. Great one. That was the one where it really came to the forefront, uh, I'm betting on wrestling, because... Yeah. Lesnar for a long period leading up to WrestleMania, a huge dog, like more than five to one against Taker. But on, on WrestleMania night, the odds were changing where Lesnar flipped a favorite right before the show. Really? Wow. Yeah. So there were there were some leaks uh, back in, you know, five, six, seven, eight years ago. That is something. Uh, we got the SmackDown Tag Team Championship, the Usos against the Mysterios. I think that I, if I'm if I'm gonna lay a guess, I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen is the Usos win because the Mysterios split. I think that Dominic turns heel on his father. What? <laughs> wow, you are an evil, evil Booker. Yes, I am. Andrew Fishfane. Oh my lord, uh, Joe, your thoughts on this match? Uh, my thoughts are the Usos retain because our guy Sefafa too makes his debut and helps the Usos win. Oh, that's right. That 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 possibility is coming too. And yeah, I like the Usos to retain on this one too. Brad, where, Brad, what do we got? Minus four hundred. So a significant. Yeah, so for everyone Usos. thinks the Usos are retaining. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, Edge and Seth Rollins. This one's. This I'll one's, let Joe go first this on this one because I just think yeah. kind of a tough one here. Uh, Joe, your thoughts on Edge versus Seth Rollins? Uh, I, I think they have built it pretty well. You know, Seth has been kind of flying under the radar. For, for a while, you know, that that's a much bigger win for him, you know, than it is for Edge. But, you know, in nowadays wrestling, you know, in the past, SummerSlam would be the be-all, end-all in that feud. And nowadays, it isn't. So, you know, it's hard to gauge. You know, if I was, if I was doing the show, I would probably have Seth Rollins go over. I, I'd say I think Rollins goes over because I think Rollins then becomes next in line to challenge Roman Reigns for the for the universal title. And if he loses to Edge, it's more difficult for him to do this. But the build for this has been, to, in my, to my mind, the best build of any of the matches on this card. And this has the, the absolute opportunity to be match of the night and steal the show. I think it's, it's going to be a terrific match. But I may differ with you guys on this a little bit. I think that there's a possibility that Edge does win this match. I uh, to bring Edge back and then to have him lose and lose, I don't think that that's what he had in mind on his comeback. So I, I, I I'm that. not going to be surprised if Edge wins this. I won't be surprised. I think Seth is probably a slight favorite, yes, but I guess we'll find out with the odds would, on Brad say, on this. Odds-wise, this, this is probably the closest of the matches. It's not. I'm surprised. Edge is minus three hundred, so you can get two to one take back uh, on Seth Rollins. Wow! If you like wow. Rollins to win two to one. Boom! There you go. I, I would have thought that would have been the closest of the matches. Wow! So Joe and Fishkin might be making some money on this. I can see the Fish is uh, getting on his uh, app over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got Bianca Bianca Belair against Sasha Banks. Bianca defending the SmackDown Women's Championship. Fish, your thoughts on this one? I think Bianca retains. I, I just, I, there's, you can't have 
her beat Sasha finally at WrestleMania, only to lose the next big pay per view after Sa- after Sasha comes back. I think there's still a lot more to do with Bianca and Bailey as well when Bailey finally comes back from injury. So I think Bianca retains this, and I think she's going to be a strong champion for a while. Joe. Yeah, you know I agree. It's like you know Sasha's had it. You know she's considered one of the best, but you know. She just won it a couple of months ago, and it's like usually, you know, unless there's any issues and they don't like what she's doing, you know, giving her the run of a bit, you know, seems to be, you know, the, the way to go, in my opinion. No chance that they're going to hot shot this and maybe keep dragging this out for a long time? They still can. That's the thing. You know, I've seen uh, heels lose clean to the baby faces, yet somehow they still got a title shot the next month. So I still can't get over Bianca whipping her with the hair at WrestleMania. And, and it's that is that still, the, that is, yeah, the, that is still one of the most amazing moments I've ever seen in a women's match it, or it, in any it, match. It, period. If Rollins edge isn't the closest. This one's got to be the closest. It is, it is close. Well, what do you think though? I'm going to take Bianca, but. I wouldn't touch this one with a ten foot pole. Yeah, if Bianca's I was minus two hundred. So that, that's really when you're talking. You know, if you're differentiating between baseball and wrestling, a minus two hundred is a close match in wrestling. No, absolutely. yeah, no, I, I think Bianca retains. All right, we've got uh, Bobby Lashley and Goldberg. <laughs> Brad <laughs> just giggling over there like a little little, little schoolgirl. Uh, Joe, your thoughts on this match? How do you think this one's going to go? Well, uh, I think uh, Lashley has been has been dominant. I think most people, you know, people are like, "Oh, you know, it should have been Brock Lesnar." I'll be honest; I don't think I don't think either one really excites the crowd. Uh, you know, a lot of people are very sour on on Lesnar, and I think a lot of people they still love Goldberg. You know, no matter what. It's going to be short, so it shouldn't be as painful as it could be if it was a 15-minute match. (laughs) But, you know, this this would be a a big signature victory for Lashley, and he really hasn't had any of those other than beating Drew. So, you know, I think Lashley has to be dominant. Fish? I'm, I'm torn between Lashley dominating him or Goldberg winning by DQ. Which is a, just a ridiculous way to do it because you don't want to you want you want Goldberg to win, but uh, I'm going to stick with 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 Joe here and Lashley. I think just dominates him. I think it's going to be it's the same way Drew McIntyre dominated Goldberg at Royal Rumble. This match is going to be under five minutes. Goldberg's going to get a couple shots in, then Lashley's going to crush him. That's what I think. Brad, what do we have on betting odds for this one? Yeah, I agree with you guys. Betting odds agree with everything that's been said. Lashley's minus 600. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, so Lashley's walking out of there with that title. Uh, The Raw Women's Championship match. This is an intriguing one. Nikki A.S.H. is a champion going against Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley. This is, and I think this is going to be a fantastic match. Uh, Let's go. Joe, your thoughts on this one? Yeah, it'll be a great match, but it's like, you know, how many times does Charlotte Flair win a title for a week? And then say how many times she held the title. Yeah, agreed. So so you think Charlotte's going to win this one? No, I don't. I, I, I think the champion should retain. I, I think that what happens is I think that Charlotte and Rhea Nick knock the crap out of each other, and and the, the Nikki is the beneficiary, and Nikki ends up winning. God, I hope not, though. I mean, it, it just my my feeling on Nikki is if you're going to put her over on this, give her a strong showing in this match. You, know, you did that with Charlotte, you know, that match where she beat Charlotte, where Charlotte was crushing her for most of the time, and then Nikki just, you know, four moves of doom, and it was all over. I mean, I, I if Nikki does win this match, then, you know, I, I hope she gets a good look and really looks good against these two. But you know what? I don't think you can make but her you know like- what? You can't make her look good against Rhea because that makes Rhea look too weak. And you, Rhea hasn't been up in the main roster long enough to look weak. But you know what? I'm going to take Charlotte. <sighs> no, I'm going to take I'm going to take Charlotte to win this match just just because it's SummerSlam. What do you What do you think? Where we got there, Brad? By far the closest odds on the board. Nikki's minus 125, basically even money, and Charlotte's plus 150. What's Rhea? 
plus 250. Wow. Put a little money on Rhea there. That would be. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah, but that that I think it's going to be a fantastic match though either way. Um I, just in case I don't know are the, are the uh, is the Raw Tag Team Championship or Finn Balor Corbin Burton? No. Nope. Uh, uh, not on there. Baron no, and, on and, there. and the other match that they haven't announced yet is going to be Drew against Jinder Mahal. Oh, we got Drew yeah, Jinder yeah, Mahal, because, too, but, coming but up. Yeah. Well, that's because Drew is battling Vinky and Sher. Mm-hmm. Vi- Vi- what, what are they? Two, the two Indian guys. I don't know their names. Mm-hmm. Vinky and Sher, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> he's, 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 he's battling them this week, and if Drew wins, they can't oh. be at ringside on, on Saturday. If, and if they yeah. win, they can be at ringside for Jinder Mahal. I was like, I'm I'm so tired of that story. Well, Jinder, if we get, Mahal, Jinder Mahal has no reason being pushed at all. Like, it just there's nothing. I there. like Jinder Mahal. I don't know. No, I, wait, I, he, I'd rather see the Bollywood boys wrestle the new Indian guys. And that would be fun. The loser a, a, leaves town. Absolutely. And that, can't they all leave town? Because I'm, I'm, ta- <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, <laughs> when Jinder Mahal was the champion, it was the biggest joke I've ever seen. Well, they he, they, he, they really no put Jinder in a Randy bad Orton. spot there, though. You you know that was that was just done because they were going over to India. And and Jinder had worked so hard to get in shape and get back and was looking good. And then all of a sudden he wins that six that that six way match. And then all of a sudden he wins the title. There was no progression on that. And everybody's like, "How did this happen?" Instead of building Jinder up because he just wanted to make some money in India. I, I felt I felt bad for Jinder on that because I I think but I, I like Jinder on several pay per views like beating Randy Orton and like in a Punjabi prison match. I know. Like, come it, on, guys. It was, and then, it was and messed had to up. have. Uh, the great Kali come out looking ridiculous like Frankenstein as he well, walks down to the aisle. Uh, well, well, let's just say real quick, real quick, because I want to make sure we get to the, I'm going to save that, that Rain Cena match for last. Just real quick on that one, round table, who wins the uh, Drew gender match? Drew. Joe? Drew. Drew. I'll, I'll, all Drew. We're all Drew. Um, and uh, we should be probably getting AJ Styles and almost – Defending the tag titles against Randy Orton and Riddle. Is it, uh, or did they break up after Randy Orton's RKO? Of oh, I, RK I, th- I think Riddle's in love. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> but if they do wrestle, it's not official yet. But if they do wrestle, Joe, who you got on that one? Oh, you gotta have uh, you gotta have RK Bro. They, you know, oh, they, ab- they ab- God the, no, the Matt Hardy, the Matt Hardy MVP thing where they don't get along but they still somehow win. Absolutely, and I, and I not only that, but I think they do it by beating almost, which is going to be the most amazing part about it. Not happening. AJ and almost win that match. Wow, Brad, no, well, not that, sure. That's tough. That's the you know. There's some bad tag team champions, but them two as tag team champions, they need to get the belts off those guys. I don't yeah. know. I, they, people like that team. No, I don't know what it is. They cheer for the heels. Go figure. Uh, we we get the Finn Balor Baron Corbin match. Baron Corbin he continues being as as Pat McAfee called him bum ass Baron. Oh, he's he's <laughs> going to get buried on this. Joe, what do you think about that one? Uh, I didn't even know it was a match on the show. It should be. It's not official you yet. Know, but... It should be the empty arena match. Yeah, <laughs> oh. you, you, you got to have Finn Balor when you didn't bring him back up to the main roster to lose to Baron Corbin. I I would agree with that. I would definitely agree with that. Um, so last one, the, of course, Roman Reigns and John Cena. Reigns the Universal Champion, John Cena. Muscle loyalty, respect coming in, getting ready to do the big dance. Let's go to Joe on this one first. What do you think? Uh, ever since they brought Reigns back, I think he's been, you know, the best character, the best stories have revolved around him. Uh, you know, Cena's coming back. I don't know. I think they might shock the world and have Cena win. I did. Fish. I did love the promo on Friday when Cena goes, "You're gonna beat my. You're gonna beat me left and right." But all I need is one, two, three, and he's absolutely right about that. The problem is everyone knows Cena is, is, is not sticking around in the WWE for much longer. After that, they can't put the his, well, his record breaking. Well, to, to counter you on that, he he did say he he's taking a lot of dates. They actually didn't want to have him on match, but apparently. He insisted he wants to get out. Yeah, there, but but, so. he, but he can't take you, you can't give him his seventeenth title, his record breaking seventeenth title for two weeks or for three weeks. It has it. It would have to be for a year, for six months but, at but least. But they won't. They they'll have him win, and then he won't defend the title for three months, and then he'll lose it. <sighs> okay, fair enough. I I, I I think that get the I, unfortunately, I think yeah, Reigns exactly. wins it, but uh, I think Cena should win it. I I'm gonna say Reigns wins, but it's a really crazy, ugly match. What do we got on this one? I was surprised. 
at these odds. Reigns is minus 500. Wow. A significant favorite. I was stunned at that. that. Yeah, I don't think Cena's ever been that big a dog. No. Yeah, I I reverse. I'm going to take (laughs) Reigns. It ain't minus minus 500 because... you know, well, the other people re- think Roman Reigns is so much better than Cena. The other he reason is 500 because somebody knows. Aren't they trying to set up the Rock and Roman Reigns for either Survivor Series or WrestleMania next year? Yeah, so they're they talking to make, WrestleMania. So, so they, so they got to keep Reigns the belt on him. Yeah, if it happens, if it happens, because the Rock apparently or has the it. Rock costs Reigns the title. Mm. Ooh, see. Ooh, should, that, we, we should be, be writing. We should be writing that, that for the WWE. Oh well. Well, speaking of writing, I did some writing because you know, of course, we have to get to our favorite game on the show. That, of course, is the exciting snap call. So uh, let's let's hit that. Because we like to make our guests squirm and suffer, let's put them through the toughest grind in professional wrestling. Get ready, everyone. It's time for the Snap Call. It is Joe DeFalco from Future Stars of Wrestling, Andrew Fishfain, Brad Powers, Handicapper Extraordinary, little old me. Fire off the Snap Call, guys. We're going to ask you some questions, give you some options, pick your best answer. And we've only got about five minutes, so we've got to keep this quick. All right, first one. Which combo of matches would you rather watch? Rain Cena, Lashley Goldberg, Kenny Omega and Christian, and Punk Darby Darby Allen, or I'll just rewatch Hogan Andre and Flair Steamboat. Joe, go first. Uh wow. That that's tough. I'm gonna go with the AEW one because they're fresh matchups. Fish? I'm I'm gonna agree just because I want to see Darby Allen Punk. Agree. AEW well, match. There you go. I, I'm I'm down with that group too. Um, if Baron Corbin was really broke, what would he have convinced you to send him at this point? Ship him McKay. He deserves it. A generous Waffle House gift card to feed the family, or dude is only getting a tide stained stick for that ratty shirt. Joe. Uh, I say neither. I can't stand this. Wow! Thing. Not even giving the tide <laughs> stick. Oh, my God, Fish. I, I'm with Joe. I can't stand this whole thing, but uh, I, I sent him in the Waffle House gift card. With the I think he's doing nice okay. Come on. Yeah. Waffle House. Waffle House. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with the I, Waffle I just don't House like card. the shtick. I think, I think he's doing it. I mean, yeah, I think it's a bad shtick, but he's think, doing a great right, job with it. I think he's doing it. a great job with it, but I just don't like the shtick itself. Like I said, yeah, I hate Yeah, I, 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 hate I agree. Guy. You know, he, he's doing the best he can with yeah. what's there, but what's there is, doesn't need to be. Yeah, Absolutely. And I, and I certainly don't need to see him stealing the money in the bank briefcase. Yeah, that was a little shaky. Will AEW beat Raw in the ratings? Maybe during football season, AEW will eventually crush them, or there's no chance, no chance in hell. Joe. I think they can. I, you know, Raw continually goes down, and and AEW, you know, when Danielson and and, and Punk come in, uh, you know, pe- people want an alternative. A lot of people aren't happy with WWE. I think they have a shot. Fish, I absolutely agree. I think I think the answer number one, they're they're going to do it. Brad, I think it takes a year, uh, but they can do it. All right. Um, result of the rumored NXT power struggle between Vince and Triple H. Triple H gets the last laugh after, after Vince leaves the company. There's a meeting of the minds between the two, or Triple H gets a hog pen rematch with Henry O. Godwin. Joe? Oh, man, I'd like to see that uh, rematch with, with Hog. I saw that match. <laughs> I was at that match, by the way. I like Phineas I. Godwin, by the way. <laughs> so you're throwing him in the hog pen, too, Brad? Ah, uh, meeting in the minds. Yeah, I think he's married that, to the family. I, 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 I must say, I, I think Vince makes him divorce Stephanie and then kicks him <laughs> out of the family. <laughs> that would be pretty harsh. Um, I have another dentist appointment tomorrow. Who would you rather watch? Check out my choppers. Isaac Yankum, <laughs> Doctor Britt Baker, DMD, or Mankind Joe. Isaac Yankum, without question, Isaac Yankum. Oh. He was Jerry Lawler's dentist. (laughs) I go Mankind. Oh, God. No one wants to give me Brit? No, No, we don't like you that much. Oh, God, I hate you guys so much. I really do. Uh, What would be the best surprise appearance at SummerSlam? Becky Lynch, Brock Lesnar, Adam Cole, Balter, or CM Punk? I gave you a bunch of options. Joe? Uh, As I said, the Rock coming in and costing Reigns would be 
would be my choice. So, uh, I don't want to see Lesnar because somehow he would become the champion after all. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going off the board with The Rock. Uh, I'm going to say Fish. Becky Lynch because I think she does make an appearance. And, and I think it's about time she's back. I think she actually absolutely comes back. And she may be the reason that Nikki A.S.H. retains the title. Ooh, Ooh, there you go. I like that. Brad. Uh, CM Punk. That would be a. a Could you smart. imagine if he showed up at SummerSlam? <laughs> that would be awesome. That, I, you know, that, that would be hilarious if he bought a ticket. W- but wouldn't that be a typical Vince McMahon thing to swerve yeah. everybody and and have yeah. CM Punk oh, show there? That would be stunning. Uh, uh, I heard. I heard they have a uh, special guest. Uh, MC Funk is going to be coming out. Yeah. <laughs> too cold Scorpio. Is it too cold Scorpio? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too cold Scorpio. On next week, it's uh during all the shows. That, that was way, Flash Funk. Shows Sorry. Next weekend. Yeah. FSW Vegas. All right. And uh, last one, real fast. Aside from Darby Allin, who would you like to see, him, see CM Punk wrestle it all out? Kenny Omega, Hangman Adam Page, Miro Sting, or Tony Khan's accountant? Tony Joe. Khan's accountant. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Joe? Uh, Darby and CM Punk. Aside from Darby. Oh, oh. Real fast, because uh, we got like a minute left, and I want to promote everybody. Give me, give me, the, give me the choices again. Okay, we'll have to skip because we got to. I got to. I got to promote Brad. Uh, first, uh, Joe, future stars of wrestling, go to FSW Vegas. Big shows coming up this weekend. A lot going on there, Brad. Real fast for you. Just follow me on Twitter at Brad Power Seven. Make money with Brad. I will tell you, <laughs> an amazing week this is going to be. SummerSlam, and you know Joe's got these great cards coming up. We got Rampage and Dynamite. Yikes! Hey, follow us at Mark Hoax Show. Go to MarkHoaxShow.com. We'll see you guys next week. Great show, fellas. Thank all three of you very much. Right up.